45 years knowing that man there, you know? You got to like somebody if you hang around with him for 45 years. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Well, how you doing this morning? All right. I, like, I don't know where Anna knows that song or not. Maybe we could sing it Sunday morning, I mean, tomorrow morning, and uh, call it, I'm No Longer a Slave to Sin. Y'all ever heard that song? I am no longer a slave to sin. I got to think about that this morning. And I got all excited. Praise God. That message last night, my God, I'm still running. That was an awesome message last night. Good to see Isaac and Janet this morning. Praise the Lord. And all the other ministers, guest ministers this morning, friends and neighbors and, and people that's going to be my, ne my friend and so forth. <laughs> well, praise God. You doing good? Let's stand up this morning. Let's get your Bibles in your hand. Let's have our confession this morning. I believe in confession in the Word of God. This is not just a tradition. It's really get it from your heart. Amen. Get it in your heart. Understand what you're really saying this morning. Say, thank God, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. God is a good God. God is a good God. I am no longer a slave to sin, for I am what the Word says I am. I can do what the Word says I can do. I can have what the Word says I can have. For my Bible, I said my Bible is God's Word speaking to me. And look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, a Bible is God's Word speaking to you. Be a doer of the Word, not just to hear the Word. All right, God bless. Wait the word around. Hug somebody before you sit down. Glory, hallelujah. Man. Glory, glory, glory. Man, it's fast week. It's already Tuesday. All day, right? <laughs> All right. Our text is in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. And it says, we walk by, not by sight. Say it again, we walk by, not by sight. You know, insight is better than eyesight. Insight is better than eyesight. Because if you go by your eyesight, you'll live defeated. But if you go by insight, you'll live a victorious life. God is so good. So just say, focus on the great I am that lives on the inside of you this morning. And our subject today is we're going to continue teaching on maintaining a, a, maintaining a speaking faith. Amen. Maintaining a speaking faith. This is where so many people, and I've really realized this these last 18 months, people I thought was really in faith, and I hadn't even seen them in 18 months. It's, it's, it's remarkable. You teach people, some of the people I've taught for 25, 35 years that was committed, dedicated, sold out, I thought, to Jesus. And then this so-called pandemic comes through town and it shuts everybody away. And they stay home watching online, but I don't know how long they're still watching it. But see, that's not what God wants us to do. He said, Hebrews 10, 25, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Even so much more as you see the day approaching. The day's approaching right now. Read Matthew 25. The day's approaching now. All kinds of things are going on. He may not come today. He may not come tomorrow, but he's coming. And I'm ready. And I'm not going to be uh, lazy in my faith. I'm going to speak the word of God, get strong in faith. I, I preach for weeks. I preach for weeks on uh, Ephesians 6.10. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his ability. Because it's not our ability, but it's his ability and our ability that gives us the ability to do what we don't have the ability to do. Don't ask me to say that again. Praise the Lord. But he gives us that ability to have a strong faith in him if we'll study the word of God. And church, I want to just encourage you to really, really get strong in your faith Amen. because we haven't seen anything yet That's right. and I know God's power and presence is here but it's up to the body of Christ you know I really blame the body of Christ for allowing this pandemic to come into the United States Amen. Yeah. Amen. We, we should have been on top of this 
We should have been in the spirit on this. We should have been in prayer on this. We, we should have been rebuking this. The Bible says in Luke 10, 19, he says, I give you the authority. Yes. And we're not using that authority that God's given to us. Amen. We need to speak the word of God. He says, I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means harm you. So Satan is nothing. So if he bothers you, say, nothing is bothering me. Nothing is bothering me. Amen. Glory to God. So we walk by faith and not by sight. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. This is our text number two also. Mark chapter 11. And it says here in verse 22, we talked about the fig tree yesterday, but I'm going to go to verse 22. So Jesus answered, Notice this is Jesus talking. You know, I found out when he's talking, we need to pay attention. Amen. Pay attention when Jesus says something, pay attention because he don't mix words. That's right. Because he is the El Shaddai. Amen. He is the God that's more than enough. Amen. He's come, like Isaac said last night, we have a revelation and we should have a revelation of who he really is. That's right. We don't, I just don't want to know him or know about him. I want to know him. Yeah, great I am living on the inside of me today. Know him. Because if I didn't know him, I'd have been dead a long time ago. If you didn't know him, you'd have been dead a long time ago. He protects us. He guides us. He leads us every step of the way. Put your faith in him. Put your trust in him. He says, Jesus answered. After Peter says, the fig tree died after you cursed it. Like he's totally surprised. When you've been around a man like Jesus and you've seen the miracles he's been performing and you get surprised because he talks to a tree and it dried up from the root. Like I said yesterday, we gotta, we gotta speak to our issues that we are dealing with and we gotta go to the root of it. What's the root of it? The devil's the root of it. The devil's the root, but we curse cancer. But Satan's behind it because he's the main root of it. And if you don't understand that, that cancer will come back. Yes. That sickness will come back. That disease will come back. Speak to the root. Jesus spoke to the root. Jesus talked to a tree. Yes. That's amazing when you think about that. But see, it wasn't just a tree. He was setting an example and teaching them how to live by faith. Trust him. He says here, have faith in God. Amen. Have faith in God. And another one says, have faith like God. Yes. Have you really meditated on that? Have faith like God? Yes. How, does, how does God have faith? Hallelujah. And he had the faith to create the universe. Amen. He had the faith to create everything. He just spoke a word. Spoke a word. And he tells us we need to learn to speak the word, but speaking in faith, believing when you say, it shall come to pass. You can have what you say, he says in verse 23. He says, oh, surely I say unto you. He said, you can mark it down. Mark it down, I say unto you. Say to this mountain, be removed, be cast to the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart. If you believe in your heart, what you say will come to pass. As I said yesterday morning, he's not talking about a mountain like you have these beautiful mountains in Tennessee. He's not talking about a natural mountain. There's no need of you trying to move a mountain. You would look really foolish trying to get out and move a mountain. God placed that mountain right where he wanted it. He's not going to let you move it. That's right. Amen. That's where he wanted it. Yeah. He's talking about the mountain, whatever comes against your life, disease of any kind, poverty of any kind. He's talking about that mountain that you deal with every day in your life. Speak to that mountain and it shall be removed. And there's some things you need to remove out of your life. Start talking to it. And they're going to move by praying, by crying over it. And he didn't say, pray about it. No. Lord, please remove this from me. No, God says, I give you the authority. Amen. When he left here, he left you and I in charge. Yeah. That's right. And we hadn't done too good a job of it yet. But we're working on it. We're getting revelation like Isaac said last night. Yeah. If he is in chapter one, Paul says, I pray that you have revelation and wisdom yeah. of the word of God. Yeah. We need revelation, meaning revealed knowledge, knowing who he really is. He's God yeah. Almighty. Yeah. 
He's the Almighty, the All Sufficient One. He's the one that created the universe, created everything, in it. and then He made you perfect. Yes. Thank you. You're not made like nobody else. You're not. Somebody said I was an accident. No, you've never been an accident. God says you were before the foundation of the world. He said he blessed you before the foundation of the world. I'm not trying to get blessed. I am blessed. I'm blessed going and I'm blessed coming. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm a winner and not a loser. I am a come, overcomer. Somebody shout, I'm an overcomer. I'm not looking to overcome. I've already overcome. People just struggling through life, trying to get through this. Trying to realize you've already got through it. Somebody said, how you doing? Well, I'm, I'm going through something. I said, go on through it. I walk through the valley. I don't stop in the valley and build a campfire and feel sorry for myself. He said, walk through the valley. Of the shadow of death, fear no evil. When you're walking through something, don't get yourself into fear. Fear is not of God. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, fear God's not a God of fear, love, joy, peace, sound mind. Yeah. My God, you got to have a sound mind. Yeah. Amen. Have your mind sound. Yeah. Love. Walking in love. So you, I've never seen so many people in my life that I thought walked in love. And they let politics or the COVID right. to yeah. even fall out of love with their own spouse. Yeah. I was talking to someone not long ago who said, and he was a wonderful man. He delivered an air conditioning unit to my house here about three weeks ago, and and uh, and I got to talking to him. We got to talking about Jesus. And man, he born again. First thing I do around whoever comes to my house, I'm gonna find if they're saved. Yeah. If they're not saved, I'm gonna ask them would they allow me to pray for them. That's what I that's what I do. If they're not saved, I said, would you allow me to pray for you? If they say no, I said that's okay. That's if he'd off and go to someone else. But we got to talking, Amen. and. Uh, I said, you sound like a Republican. <laughs> now, if you're a Democrat, don't be offended over that. Don't get mad at me now. Praise the Lord. And uh, so I talked to him. He said he was, but he said, my wife just recently turned Democrat. And I said, that's okay. He said, well, it, I thought it was. But then there's issues. But see, husbands and wives should be able to agree and disagree. See, I've been married. I've been married a few days. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been married this beautiful. You, come on in. <laughs> we got some va seats available for you. Yes, sir. <laughs> I married a beautiful woman. Yes, sir. Still beautiful. Yes. Fifty-eight years. Yes. Amen. Yes. And she, she, we've we've had some. Like I said yesterday, we've we've had some uh, heavy conversations. Yes, Heavy conversations. But see, we're so much in love with each other, we didn't let it divide us. But we know how to pray and still love each other. We know how to disagree and then agree. We made up our mind a long time ago when we got married, we made a long time ago that when we get ready to buy something, we always agree on it. If we can't come into agreement, we won't buy it. Don't be like some people, I'm going to buy it anyway. Yeah, you're going to be in a doghouse for weeks. <laughs> When I first got married, I realized doghouse is not a good place to be. That's why I had to behave myself. You have to behave yourself. Amen. Glory to God. Anyway, where am I at? Fear not. God is a peaceful God. God of peace. Fear is of the devil. Let me turn over there first. Second Peter. I'm sorry. Second Timothy. I've got so many things going through my head here. Praise the Lord. I said, your head ain't that big. Thank you. Second Timothy chapter 1. I mean, he said, yeah. Verse 7 says, he said, for God did not give us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and of a sound mind. God gave us peace. Yes. Peace. Amen. Amen. Fear causes you to forget God. causes you to forget God and you don't compromise don't, if you compromise you lose That's right. are you hearing me fear brings evidence 
that appears to be real. But it's not real. The word of God is real. We find in uh, Hebrews 11 chapter, verse 1, now faith is, it talks about in the Amplified Bible, real fact. Faith is a real fact. Yes. It's not a facade. Faith is real, church. Yes. That's why we've got to keep speaking faith. Whatever you're going through, keep talking faith. Yes. Whatever you're going through, just keep going, keep walking, keep talking. I live by faith, yes. walk by faith, yes. and I don't go by sight. I know and I don't deny the fact that there's something there, but I acknowledge the word of God over what is there. So I take the word of God and, and combat the issue that I'm facing in life. I've been through some issues in my life, but God's always bring me through it. Amen. Grand style. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fear always attracts failure. Fear always attracts failure. That's why you need to guard yourself against fear. We all have opportunity to be afraid, but don't get into fear. It's one thing to be afraid of something all of a sudden, but there's another thing to get into fear. Fear is a spirit. Fear is a spirit, and it's not a God spirit. It's a devil spirit. It's a wrong spirit. It's a, it's a killing spirit. Fear is a killing spirit. I've known people, I've been pastoring now uh, almost 50 years total, and I've known people over the years talking to them and doctor give them a bad report and, and they didn't know they had this or had that situation going on in their life and doctor exposes it to them and they looked like they were doing fine but when they got exposed to what the doctor said they went down quickly and died. They got into fear. What am I going to do? I've seen people in our church over the years, years ago, that's one particular person, several over the years, uh, they get, they leave the church for whatever reason. Next thing you know you see them back in church, see them in the back row. Then we find out they're under attack. Their life is threatened. So you don't have to wait to come to church because your life is threatened. That's right. You come to church when your life isn't threatened. Amen. So you can receive from God. You don't wait till the last five minutes of your life to pray and find, find scripture on your situation. It's too late. Because you've got to build a life of faith inside of you. You've got to get in this word of God and meditate. As Joshua 1 8 says, meditate in the word of God day and night. Meditate. Be, in other words, be conscious of the word of God and everything that you do and say. Amen. Just be conscious of it. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Faith, walk out. Faith, you've got to walk it out. Yes. You've got to walk it out. Let's look over here to uh, Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. The Lord is good. Oh, yeah. Acts 20 verse 18 says this, and when they had come to Paul, Paul said to them, you know, from the first day I came to Asia, in what manner I always lived among you. He said, in what manner I always lived among you. He said, you see my life, you watch my life, and I try to live the life of God around you. Yeah. 19 says, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and many trials, which happened to me by the plotting of the Jews. Now, I kept back nothing that was helpful, but proclaiming it to you and taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying to the Jews, also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ. And you see now, I go bound in the spirit of Jerusalem, not knowing the things that's gonna to happen to me there. I don't know what's gonna happen, except that the Holy Spirit, except the Holy Spirit testifies in every city saying that chains and tribulations await me. I'm going, but I know there's trouble coming. I'm going, but I know that the devil's after me. I know there's gonna be a great trial and test coming, but I'm going because I know I'm being led by the Spirit of God. And I love verse 24, but, not, but, if I say but, but none of these things move me. But none of these things move me. I know I'm headed for trouble, but look out trouble, here comes faith. Look out trouble, here comes faith. 
Paul was a great man of faith. Everything he found himself involved in, every, every time he got in prison, whatever he was doing, you know why he so much in faith? Because he had an experience with God. You know, so many people just don't have an experience with God. When you get saved, when you get born again, you've got to, you've got to know that you know that you know that you've had an experience with God. Amen. Not of a shaking or a feeling or an emotion, right. but you've got to know that you know that I know that God forgave me. Amen. There's a lot of people who say, I don't know if God forgave me or not because you don't know about him. You've got to study the word of God, get in the word of God, know what God's done for you. I'll never forget the day I got born, not born again, but the day I got, I remember that, but the day I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I was in a Baptist church. They did not teach the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He preached on salvation at every service. I felt like I want to get saved every service. That pastor, I loved him. He, he was a man of God. He was a man of fire. He had the, had the Spirit of God all over him when he preaches. I mean, when he preaches, he walked back and forth, had that mic, that little mic, that little ribs in it. My God, he preached. But on a Sunday morning, we was having communion. Never forget long as I live. It's like yesterday. Having communion. And we was having communion. And he said these words. He was out in the front. Get ready to serve communion. He said, if there's anything in your life that you want, ask for it. Whatever you need, God will give it to you. Amen. And I had been saved long. And so in the Baptist church, I was about the only one that would raise my hand. But I'll raise my hand. I said, God, give me everything you got. I don't know what you got for me, but give me everything you got. Give me everything you got. I want everything you got. Because I had about everything the devil had. But when I got saved, my God, I came out of hell. I came out of the pits of hell almost. I was a rough life for me. But God turned my life around. Don't tell me God can't fix your situation. Don't tell me God can't fix your husband. Don't tell me God can't fix your wife. Don't stop believing for them. Amen. Don't go by what you see. Right. Sometimes when you start believing for them, they get worse. But that means they're getting better. Amen. That means they're getting better. Just keep standing on the word of God by faith. There, I see them by faith born again. Yeah. I see them by faith born again. Yeah. And that morning when I said that and I had my hands lifted up, Glory to God. I mean, the Spirit of God came on me, saturated me. It was if somebody had took a water hose and just poured hair all over my head. And I began to tremble. I began to tremble. I was shaking all over. You know, honey? My wife was saved. She didn't know what was happening to me. She didn't know what was happening to me. I was trembling all over. Man, I was just shaking. I ran down to that pastor. I grabbed him. This is, this is, we got 100 witnesses. That little Baptist church was jammed out. It held 100 people. Jammed out. I went down there. He was standing on the front. I grabbed him. When I grabbed him, we both like a pogo stick. <laughs> jumping up and down. Jumping up and down like a pogo stick. I mean, the power of God hit me and hit him too. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Baptized me with the Holy Ghost that morning. I got the tongue, but I heard it on the inside, but I didn't know how to speak it out. I was waiting for God to grab my tongue and bring it out. But I realized I had to do the talking. But after that day, I believe it was the same day when I, I, I took communion. They were, yeah, they were serving communion while me and him was jumping up and down. But I had, I had an experience with God. It was like I was out of my body, looking down at my body all day that, that day. And I did not, didn't, for years, didn't know the understanding of it. But I, I could tell you, I actually saw myself that whole afternoon. I don't know how long it was, but it was a long time that afternoon. Saw myself. Everywhere I, I was, I just looked at myself. It was like I was not in my body anymore. But my body was still moving and going and doing. And for years I didn't know, and I kept saying, God, what was the reason for that? And one day I heard the Holy Spirit. I never heard an audible voice, never had. But I've heard voices in here that are strong, like an audible voice. What happened was, when I go through something, a real trial in life, 
All of a sudden, I could remember that day. And I knew God was a miracle working God. Yeah. And that, that came to my attention through hearing the voice of the Spirit on the inside saying, I'm a miracle working God. Yeah. It reminded me that God is who He says He is. Yeah. God is awesome. Praise God. And tell a make a long story short, when God baptized me with the Holy Ghost, the pastor, uh, we wanted to go have a time of prayer, praying in the Spirit when I got speaking in tongues. And so he let us have the old chapel when we built a new church. We had the old chapel. And uh, when we do it at church on Sunday nights, and Wednesday we go in there and we start all of just get together and pray. He said, he, he gave us permission to do that. I never did anything without his permission. Always get the pastor permission. Just don't do things without the pastor permission. Because the pastor is the head shepherd of the church. Amen. Jesus is the head shepherd of the, of the born again child of the church. Amen? Amen. Born again church. But uh, we ask for permission. You know, we, people coming in, people getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. And uh, my wife went to the pastor one day. She says, Pastor, Pastor Durham, Robert Durham was his name, Pastor. She said, I don't think I'm saved. He said, why? He goes, I don't act like my husband. <laughs> I was what you call a wild man yeah. in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. I was loud. I was bold and so far for God. I get on the elevator yeah. and I had a big old Bible back then. I stuck it underneath my arm. I still get my own. Get I get on the elevator where I go visit somebody at the hospital, and I said, "I don't know about it. I don't know about you. that's on this elevator, but if this elevator goes down, I'm going up." <laughs> and the next floor, God's not. And the next floor, everybody got off. <laughs> everybody got off. <laughs> Amen. I just wasn't ashamed of Jesus. I just wasn't ashamed of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. God. Amen. And so I don't let nothing move me. Amen. I'm like Paul. None of these things move me. Amen. And Paul walked his faith out. Every, every situation he was in, he walked his faith out. You've got to walk out your faith. Amen. Don't stop believing God. Keep believing God. Don't say, well, it looks like it's not going to happen. You stop walking. That's right. It don't look like it's going to happen this week or next week. You stop walking. Every day I get up, I'm still believing God for things that I've been praying about, standing on the word for for years. I'm still walking. Yes, sir. I'm still walking, but I've seen a lot of things God's done for me, and I got no room to complain whatsoever. And if you start complaining, you start you stop walking. Amen. If you get in fear, you stop walking. If you get offended, you stop walking. All these little things in life, there's so many things that stop you from walking, but you gotta keep walking by faith. Keep walking by faith, trusting God. Paul says, none of these things move me. Amen. And he, when you're walking by faith, there's always a shout of praise in your heart. There's always joy in your heart. And there's always a song in your heart when you're living by faith. I, there's no other way to live. The scripture says, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. The just means the just means the righteous ones. We became righteous the very moment we got born again. You can't do anything to get righteous, to be righteous, except get born again. Hallelujah. I'm the righteousness of God. Amen. Walk by faith and not by sight. Paul was a man of God. I mean, the very moment that the man of God laid his hands on him and the scales fell from his eyes after he got born again on the road to Damascus, immediately from that point on, he became a man of fire. Yes. Yes. See, we need to become people of fire. We have the fire, yes. but you, you threw a wet blanket over it. We have the fire. It's burning inside of you right now. Sometimes you quench that fire. The Bible says you quench the spirit. Don't quench the spirit. Let the fire roll. Yes. Be bold in the Holy Ghost. Yes. I'm just as bold now, not more than ever before. Be bold in the Holy Ghost. But being bold in the Holy Ghost don't make you unwise. That's right. Being bold will give you wisdom how to be bold. Amen. 
Some people get stupid when they call it bonus. That's right. But bonus is, is, is a love walk. We're faith walk. Yeah. Amen. When you witness to people, you witness to them in love. Right. You don't get in their face and say, you're going to go to hell if you don't get saved. That might be a time you, God may tell you, but when God tells you, you know it. You don't do it unless God tells you. Because if God tells you, something good's going to happen. That's right. And if something good don't happen, you better run. Amen. That person could get really ill with you. But we have a joy in our heart. Amen. In Philippians, Paul says, and while he was in prison, in prison, writing this letter, in prison, and there's no running water. There's no bathrooms. Everything is smell. You can imagine what the smell was like. Awesome. The, the rats was probably as big as dogs. It's like they have some in some parts of the world here where we have big dogs. I've seen some rats in India that was huge. And they, they had them in the market where they sell them for food. I said, Lord, John, why did you bring me, John Routon, why did you bring me to this market? He said, I want to see what they eat here. Over here was, was, was dead rats for sale. And over here was dead dogs for sale to eat. Dogs is a delicacy in India. Not in my life. <laughs> Give me a good old cheeseburger, beef, all beef, <laughs> Angus beef cheeseburger. <laughs> but Paul was writing the book of Philippians like he writes all the books. And most of them he wrote them in prison. And he would rejoice. He told us anywhere from 16 to 18, 19 times in the book of Philippians, he said, rejoice. rejoice. Now listen, this is a man that was incarcerated, in prison, beaten, and writing a letter to you and I to help us. That right. kind of reminds me of Jesus when he went to the cross, he was beaten. He was beaten, shed his blood on that trip to the cross. Before he ever got there, they said he was unrecognizable. The pain, pain he went through for you and I, to suffer for you and I, so you and I could walk by faith. Amen. But see, here's the victory that came through that. Jesus said, I'm not just going to the cross, I'm going beyond the cross. I'm not just going through the pain, I'm going beyond the pain. Because this pain is only temporary. Your pain is only temporary. Because if you look ahead of that, Look beyond your pain. Look beyond your situation. By faith, see it. See it by faith. And you'll have victory at all times. See it and claim victory. Thank God the word of God works. Somebody said, well, I tried faith and it didn't work. No, faith tried you and you didn't work. Faith tried you and you didn't work. But we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. I feel like I could run through a troop and leap over a wall. You just don't know how good God's been to me. Pastor Charles knows it. Pastor Sue knows it. God's been so good to me. Raised me from the dead. Doctor says you'll never make it, you'll die. If you do live, you're going to be in a nursing home the rest of your life. That was 10 years ago, Isaac. August 10 years ago. My whole right side was paralyzed. I couldn't raise my hand. And when he got there to do surgery, he, said, he looked at it. All of a sudden, it just, the, the uh, blood clot just disappeared. Because people like Isaac and Pastor Charles, people like you, this church was praying. My church was praying. Other churches praying. Mark Hank is there. All were praying. I tell you, prayer is powerful. Prayer is powerful. And when I come in, they, he, he rolled me out of that operating room. I mean, that was a brand new operating room. Nobody had ever been there before, but he just had it built for him. He was a new, a new surgeon, new surgeon there, and had it just built for him. And I was the first patient. God knew he building it for me because he didn't want nobody else in there before me. I don't want no, no germs. Glory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when I came out, my family's in the hallway there. And he said, Mr. Privet, he said, raise your right hand, show your family what happened. I raised that right hand. Before, I couldn't, I couldn't even move it. It just hanged like a dish rag. I couldn't even talk. The whole right side was 
numb, paralyzed. But what paralyzed God can unparalyze. In a moment of time, in a second, God can turn things around. One moment they give you death, but God always gives you life. He says, I come not to give you death, but I come to give you life. Satan comes to kill, to steal, to destroy, but but Jesus, but Jesus came to bring life and to bring it more abundantly. Life, Zoe, meaning life as God has it. I'm standing on the word of God by faith. I have life like God has it. And I, I said last night, we are going to plan our own death. That's right. Short of what it said. Yes, sir. I'm planning my own death. I'm going to go when God wants me to go, and I'm not going to go before he wants me to go. I'm not going to let no devil, no disease, no issues come into my life to try to take me out. The devil's a liar. He's defeated. I'm more than a conqueror. He has no place on me. This is the temple. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. This is God's house. I said, this is God's house. So devil, you got to keep your hands off this house. Children of Israel leaving Egypt. Moses told them, put blood on the doorpost. When the deaf angel come by the last plague, when he sees the blood, he'll pass over you. When he sees the blood, he'll pass over you. When I got born again, I got the blood of God in my brain, my, 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 my inside me, in my, in my veins, the blood of God. I, I got like that. He got a good book on DNA. Man, that's awesome. Thank me, God's my DNA. He's my, my DNA. He lives inside of me. And so when I got born again, I got a revelation of who I am. You got to study church. It don't come overnight. You got to get a revelation. And I mean, I'm challenging you. Get a revelation. Get in the word of God. Get strong in faith. Get strong in faith. That your mouth do your walking. That your life do the showing what your mouth has been saying. And your body, your life will always tell on you of how you really are. Amen. Your mouth will always say what you are, what you look like, and what you're going through. Amen. And if you don't like the way you live, change the way you talk. That's right. The blood on the poor, door panels, those. When I got born again, I got the blood of Jesus. And when the devil sees me, he says, I see a reflection of Jesus. So I can't touch this man because when I see him, I see Jesus. When I see him, I see Jesus. That's where our faith should be. When the devil sees us, we try to try to, he needs to see Jesus. But you gotta know that you've been talking. You can't just think about it. You gotta speak it out where you can hear it. Speak it out where you can hear it. We are in a, a reflection of Jesus. Hallelujah. hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's, close, let's go to Acts 16 and we'll close with this. Acts 16. You know where I'm going. Paul Silas cast out a devil. And the politician didn't like it. The merchants didn't like it. When you cast out devils, people ain't gonna like it. Some people don't even like you cast the devil out of them. They like that devil. <laughs> they want to keep that devil. Right. I've heard some people over the years say, no, I want to, I want to keep that one. Cast, cast this one out, but let me have that one. <laughs> I kind of like my wife one time. I, I was talking about cast out devils and everything. And she said, I said, I said, my wife, I think, got a mall demon just joking with her. She said, I want to keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Silas got in trouble because they were obeying God. See, obeying God don't keep you out of trouble. Obeying God does not keep you out of trouble. Obeying God will get you in trouble sometimes. But remember this, Paul was a troublemaker. That's why he was thrown in prison so much. Because everywhere he goes, he caused trouble for the sin. He caused trouble for the sinners. They didn't like it. The, he caused trouble for the religious crowd. We should be causing trouble for everybody we're around that's not right with God. Amen. Just get in their presence. I have people sometimes say, Pastor, 
I, I can't be around you long. I said, why is that? He says, there's something about you. I said, it's Jesus. Don't you want to get saved? But there's something about you. Paul and Silas cast the devil out of this woman. And verse 25 says, and at midnight, your midnight's right here. This is your midnight hour right now. Things are going to change right now for you. He said, at midnight, they were praying and singing. Now, they would have been, they had been beaten, blood running down their backs, down their face, all bruised up, beat up. But they were singing. Being some of us, we've been crying. Oh, my God, why has that happened to me? I don't understand. I've served God all my life. And I'm, somebody hurt my feelings. Somebody hurt my feelings. They were beat up at midnight praying. At midnight praying. Hallelujah. Singing hymns. To who? To who? Singing hymns to who? God. Singing hymns to who? God. They knew where their source was. And the prisoners were listening to them. People will listen to you when you're going through something. They see you when you're going through something. And when you show them that you're going through it and you're still praising God, you are an example of when they need something, they're going to come to you. I don't care how bad they are. I don't care how much they persecuted you. And if you need help, they're going to come to you. Amen. They're going to come to you. Amen. He says here, suddenly, there was a great earthquake so the foundations of the prison were shaken. Immediately all the doors were opened. Every chain was loose. Many times Paul was distracted. They're in a place now that didn't let distraction stop them from praising God. Don't ever let distraction stop you from praising God. Whether it's a situation in your body, in your family, in your finances, don't ever stop praising God. Don't ever stop praising God. When they told me in Tulsa, Oklahoma in 1980, I had to have back surgery. I had hurt my back in late 79. And I drove a truck sideways. I couldn't walk straight up for, for, for six months. I walked side, like, like this. I could not sleep in the bed with my wife. When I got there, I had to get me a job. I worked like this for three or four months. I still work. I come home during lunchtime. I work in the same neighborhood I lived in. I come home for lunch and lay on the floor. My wife put her hands on me and pray for me every day. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my healing. I get up every day early, lift this word before God. I said, God, I'm standing on your word. I'm believing your word. I'm trusting your word. In July, hot, it's hot in Tulsa in July. I was sideways, went to a back surgeon. I went to a chiropractor. I'm not going to go through that. It, that didn't work. And God, chiropractor can do good work on you, I tell you. But it didn't work for me. So I went to that doctor. He said, you've got to have surgery. I walked out of that big building that day. I looked up at the sky, lifted my hands. I said, Jesus, you're my healer. I thank you I'm healed by your stripes. And I was doing it like this now, sideways. This is July. I was going to go to Bible school at Raymond in September. And when September rolled around, about two weeks before September, I got up one morning totally healed. Totally healed. But in 1992, 93, I was, I was preaching for David Sharing in Vegas. I got up on a Sunday morning. It's Thanksgiving weekend. Got up on a Sunday morning. I was taking a shower. You know how you raise your leg up and wash your feet? And I raised it, it's like, like somebody stuck a hot poker right in my back. And I felt my back look, again going that way. And I said, I don't, I'm out of my mouth. He immediately came. I'll be healed by sundown. <laughs> and the whole day I just stayed at David's house. And I was going to play football with him. I was not able to do that. I made a big mistake. I shouldn't have said sundown. I said, well, I'm healed right now. <laughs> <laughs> But God's my witness. My wife was with me. The sun was going down when we got back to our hotel room, Isaac. The sun was going down. When I got out of the car, no more pain. Immediately I said, Lord, forgive me. I gave you a whole day to heal me almost. And I've already been healed for 2,000 years. 
I made a mistake, God, forgive me. I'll never let that happen again. So when I say down, uh, go through something, I said, right now, now faith is. 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 Now faith is the evidence. I hadn't had a problem since in my back. I've had those challenges. You never stop being challenged, church. Don't, don't live in a, in a fantasy world. James 1, 3 says, your faith will be tried, not you. Amen. It's your faith that's going to be tried, not you. So that's why you got to keep your faith strong. He, he wants to steal your faith because if he can steal your faith, he can steal you. Amen. If he can steal your faith, he can get your goods. That's right. He ain't messing with my goods. He ain't, he ain't stealing. He, the devil's not stealing nothing from me. Amen. Somebody said, oh, don't talk, don't talk like that. You know, he, he'll come at you. I dare him. I'm not afraid. Because I know who I am. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can have what God says I can have. The greater word lives inside of me. Stand up and give him some praise right now. I might give him a shout in the house. Say it again. I walk by faith. 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 I'm building my faith strong. I walk by faith and not by what I see. For God is who He says He is. And I believe the Word of God. He is working mightily in my family, in my life, in my church, on my job. He's working in every situation in my life. You believe that? Come on, one more time. Give him a shout of hallelujah. Glory! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory! God. God is good. I will return tomorrow morning. But that will be my last service here. But I will be here tonight. And also, I'll be here tomorrow, morning, tomorrow night. But I'll leave out Thursday morning. But I'm just... This week's gone too fast. Oh, I love teaching faith. Remember what I told you yesterday? God gave me an assignment yeah. 10 years ago. Teach my people faith. And I'm going to teach it. And if you don't like it, that's your problem. I'm going to teach it because I know it works. Faith works. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. God bless.